important? Do they matter? If they all disappeared, would it matter? So starting out, I had to begin a mission to try and figure out where exactly does Halamita Kanawana occur? Now, you know, you talk to the people who are in the water a lot, and they'll say, oh, there's some here. There did used to be some here, but now it's here. But you kind of have to start out making a map. So over the past few years, we've been collecting all these observations and working with scientists and natural resource managers. We've gone out and done surveys with submersibles and with remotely operated vehicles and with tech diving and all kinds of things. And what we found is that these Halamita Meadows tend to occur in gentle waters over the sand and occur right now over most of Maui, all around Ko'olawe, around Lanai, Molokai, and there is even a little tiny patch or sporadic patches discovered in deep water off Oahu at about 160 feet and in about um, 120 feet of water, roundabouts. So, gosh, there's a lot of it. It's everywhere. In fact, recently we just collected some more information and it turns out it's all the way around here around Kohoolawe, it goes all the way to at least to this edge in Maui, and even whoop, it comes down here into this bay in Lanai. So it's a really common part of the Hawaii ecosystem. And what's even neat, it occurs really deep. So with the submersible surveys and ROV surveys we've been able to do, for instance, this is all the way down at 297 feet deep. All the way down, this is off of Kahikili or Airport Beach, which is in West, um, West Maui just um, like around Ka'anapali. And this is what they look like. So these plants are really tall and sort of spaced out, but really abundant. So if you look at this area, you're like, ah, there's a lot of halamita here. And they're pretty much as far as the eye can see. Okay, so, um, so now we kind of figured out generally where it occurs. And if anyone sees it, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll add it onto the map in case you're ever out in the water. Um, so the next question um, that we started to try and answer are, well, how, how long do they live? You know, is this a weedy plant? Does it come and go like weeds? Or is it like a tree, like an ohio the hill forest that may stay there and persist through time? So we wanted to figure out generally what its lifespan was, months or, you know, weeks or months or years. And then we wanted to figure out um, what the, its abundance was like, so how dense it is. So if you go to one place, like if you go off here off um, Kihei and you do a dive, do you find the same number of plants as you would go if you went and dove off um, Ka'anapali? You know, if you go to the same depths, are they similar? If you go deeper, is it different? We really didn't know. So we, what we did is did a bunch of surveys going out and diving, and it's pretty simple. All you do is you take a quadrat, like what you have here, which we made out of PVC, and you're out diving, and you take it and unfold it. Oops, hopefully not in your microphone. And uh, there you go and just put it together, and then you close your eyes, you swim to the middle of the window, and you just throw it. <laughs> and then you count, it's called haphazard sampling. And what you do then is you just count all the plants that land in this quadrat. And this is a quarter meter square quadrat, and that's what we do hundreds and hundreds of times. <laughs> so I'm gonna show some graphs and things, but don't worry about it, you can totally follow with me. All right, so, Basically, this looks like a lot of lines, but actually each color is a different plant. So these are 10 plants that I tagged. I went out and in this big area found a little, little small plant that didn't have hardly any epiphytes on it, so I knew it was pretty new. It was kind of like a toddler. And I knew it was a new plant and I tagged it. And I tagged them way back in 2004. And then every few months I would go and I would count it. So I'd go back and have to find it in that big old meadow and I'd visit it and I'd go through and I'd count every segment. One, two, three, four, five, six, 100, 200, every segment, <laughs> and then count all of them. And we have about 25 plants tagged right now that we go back and visit every few months. And so every dot that you see here is a time that we've been back to visit it. So I'm just going to show you 10 of our plants, 1 through 10. I keep wanting to give them names, but I haven't done that yet. But 1 through 10, and let's look at number 7, for instance. And if we look at number plant 7, when it started out, all the way back in November 2004, it was my monster it had, you know, between 250 and 300 segments. It took me like 15 minutes to count it. And I came back a few months later and, oh, you know, I had a lot less, closer to 200. Then I came back even later in 2005 and, oh, it had like, you know, down to 100. And I thought, oh, plant number seven, it's having a hard time. It must be getting ready to die or maybe it's not you know, at the end of its lifespan. So I went back and it was about the same. And then, boom. And all the way up here, it's back up, you know, above what it was before, close to 350. And then, you know, it started going back down again. 
And when I checked it um, to, um, towards the end of last year, what I found is it only had about 20 segments to it. So I'm really excited to get back in the water. In fact, Matt and I are going to go diving tomorrow and look at plant number seven and see what it's going, what's happening with it. But if you can get an idea then, of all the plants that I, the ten, these 10 plants, by eight months, 80% of them were alive. So what this suggests is that these plants can definitely live, you know, at least a few months. And by the time um, I went to my, uh, 20 months, about 40% of them were alive. So they were still hanging on. And I went and just checked a few plants yesterday, and some of these plants are still alive. So we know that the, there, there are some plants that probably live uh, maybe a few months to a year. Other plants can live at least 20 months long. And some, at this point now, I know at least two years. So what this suggests is that the maximum lifespan of this plant, based upon what we know so far, is at least 20 months. So these plants, um, while some are more weedy, and they do come and go, some also are very long-lived. Um, the next thing is, we uh, again, this is going out in counting densities. This is Donna Brown. And this is how we do it. Again, there's our quadrat that's out. And then here's the clipboard with a <laughs> fluorescent clipboard, and then it has a really cool ruler on the side. So we actually use that to measure how tall the plants are in addition to counting them. So we go through and we count these densities. And what we found with that, um, again, here's measuring the canopy heights. So we use those rulers that are on the side to measure how tall the plants are. But what I'm going to talk about mainly right now are the densities. So if you go to one meadow versus other meadows at different depths, are you going to find the same thing? So first off, all this, these areas in blue, what they are are the number of plants per meter square, so in an area about that big. And if you just look at one location, the location called Kahikili, again, which is Airport Beach in West Maui, what we saw, and, and this is in meters, it's about 3.3 feet per meter. As a scientist, we always try and think in meters, so that's what all the data is shown in this time. So at about 10 meters or 30 feet, you can see how many, there's not too many plants. There's a little bit less than 50. But when you go to about 60 feet deep, then you've got a lot more, about 350, and a similar at about 100 feet deep. And then all the way down to 137 feet, or about 40 meters, it starts to decrease again. So I'm like, wow, this is a really nice, we call bell curve distribution of abundance. And then my next question was, well, if I go to other locations at similar depths, would I find the same number of plants? And as it turned out, the answer is, some places, generally, yes, and then other places, no way, not even close. So if you go to, for instance, Mala Wharf, or um, you'll find as many plants as what you find at 27 meters at Popovai Point or at 40 meters at Kahekili. So from the shallowest depth to the deepest depth, it was the same number. But then in between, it was all very different. So here from 10 to 15 meters, the abundance was similar at Honolulu and Hono, Honokawai and Kahikili and McKenna Landing. But then it was different at these different depths. So generally, what we see is that the densities vary between sites and among depths at a particular location. So a Halamina Meadow is not a Halamina Meadow, is not a Halamina Meadow at different locations.